Double Down students, I know you didn't expect class today, but guess what? We're going to have to take some notes on Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier, number two. This is a very important matchup, and I wanted to break this one down in depth before I release the full card preview and prediction video. So we're going to break this one down. And before we get into it, did you guys ever see the community post I put out about my new partnership with uh, Grey Dog Software, the creators of the game or the game series of World of Mixed Martial Arts? World Mixed Martial Arts 5 is the most recent title. It is a fantastic game. If you haven't played it, it's wonderful. I mean, technically they're paying me to say that, but it's a fantastic game. I played it before. I played it before they talked to me, um, before we set this thing up. There is a link in the description of this video to which you can purchase that game or any of their other titles at a discount before July 23rd, which is another reason I want to get this video out earlier uh, rather than later. But before July 23rd, so you can purchase that now and get, get a savings. But if you use that link, you can help out the channel, and I'd appreciate it very much. Pretty soon, I'm going to probably put together a live stream in which I'll be playing the game and maybe just chatting along with you guys about some MMA stuff. Should be something fun. Let me know in the comments if that'd be something you're interested in. Um, but, you know, without any other wasted time, you can know where you can find me, all that good stuff. Let's just go ahead and break down this fight because I'm really excited to do it, and this video is probably going to be a bit of a long one. So, Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier. Let's break it down right after this. You want to The rematch. We've got Justin Gaethje coming in three and two in his last five. He's taking on Dustin Poirier, four and one in his last five. Now, this matchup is interesting because we've got a lot of information, a big sample size for both guys because both Justin Gaethje and Dustin Poirier have been in the UFC for quite some time. And even better, they've fought each other before because it's a rematch, the second fight. So we've got a lot to go off of here. And so I'm not just going to say, oh, well, this happened in the first fight, so this is what's going to happen here. We're going to look at it in depth because they've changed a little bit since then. It has been a little while, a few years actually. Um, so we're going to go over go over each fighter in depth. We're going to kind of weigh the pros and cons, and then we're going to try and figure out who we think is going to win this one. And let's go ahead and start by analyzing some striking. Let's start on the Justin Gaethje side here. Actually, let's kind of bounce back and forth. Let's do this one a little bit. We're going to bounce back and forth. So both guys have a very similar block and return style. So what do I mean by that? They block a shot and throw back with either a combination or a single shot. Um, usually for Justin Gaethje, it's, you know, that, that normal blocking. And for uh, for Dustin Poirier, it's something of a Philly shell, where he's kind of like this, or like putting those elbows up. It's not not the traditional Philly shell, but it's very similar. So for both guys, they like to block and then come back with their own shots. Um, but they're also usually walking forward. They're both using that forward pressure, trying to walk each other down. Now, that's where it's interesting, because both guys... If they're both going to be trying to walk forward, they kind of have different styles. Like, so J Justin Gaethje probably has a little more forward pressure because he just walks through things. So, like, when he's when he's coming forward with that block and return style, he's just walking through stuff and just doesn't seem to care, which can be good because he can put pressure on a guy like Dustin Poirier, who, when he starts to get heavier pressure than he's putting forward, he's going to start backing straight up. He's going to be backing up against the cage at that point, which isn't necessarily bad for him because he can use he can defend takedowns really well against the cage. Not that Justin Gaethje is going for a takedown, but in in most fights, that's where he doesn't mind going up there and he can he can work off the cage with his striking. He, he's not really he doesn't feel trapped there per se. So uh, so for both guys, they have forward pressure and they're going to use the block and return style. So it's very similar in that aspect. What is also similar, they both hit very hard. They both have pretty good volume and they're both well. They both have really good volume, but they and they both hit very hard. So like, they're very similar in the striking in, the, in these departments. There's a couple of things different though. Um, one, Dustin Poirier can get sucked into a brawl. Justin Gaethje's looking for a brawl. So Justin Gaethje wants to turn this fight into a brawl. Poirier wants to keep it kind of a technical brawl, but he can just get sucked into just winging hammers and winging bombs. Okay, and that's what'll happen to him sometimes. We saw it recently in the Michael Chandler fight where it kind of just turned into a brawl at one point so uh so for for Poirier he's trying to look he's looking to kind of throw his technical combinations at times uh Gaethje wants to turn this into a brawl right away because he knows that most of the time if he's just going to run uh, head on with somebody he's probably going to come out on top that's how he does a lot of his fights it works well for him it's worked well for him in the past so so there is that now when it comes to this both both guys are typically offense over defense um I would say more so on the Justin Gaethje side uh, I'd say he really just wants to go in there and throw offense. Uh, for Poirier, he's probably got the better footwork out of the two. He can strike well from either stance. 
Uh, Gaethje just kind of just keeps plodding forward, okay? It's not, it's not like he has bad footwork. I put it as a negative here, but in this matchup, it's not so good. It's not pretty, but it's very effective for him in his style. So um, the things that I really think are, are keys to victory for each guy. So for Justin Gaethje, on the feet anyway, his leg kicks. Now, we saw this in the first matchup. He can throw his leg kicks really in tight, and he can throw them hard, and he can throw them like in a, in a range that most people can't throw a leg kick. And we saw in the first fight, he was able to drop Poirier with a couple of leg kicks, get him, get him to put a hand on the mat, you know, especially when Poirier would, would plant his feet and try to throw a big shot at him, and then Gaethje would hit that, hit that leg and just put him down. So Gaethje was able to land some serious power on those leg kicks in that fight, which in most fights he does. Uh, but he was able to do that in the first matchup with Poirier, which has a path here. Now, on the other side, Dustin Poirier being one of the hardest hitters in the entire division, you know, not crazy to say, in the pocket, he's exceptionally dangerous. So when he gets in the pocket and starts stringing together these punches from all different angles, whether it's the uppercuts, the hooks, the elbows, he's coming at you from different angles. He'll even throw the straight punches as you start to back out of the pocket. He's got these things you know, these angles coming at you with with these shots, whether it's just a punch or an elbow or, like I said, anything. He's got these coming at you from all different angles. And when he hits you, when he connects with you, he's going to be able to put some put some hurting on you. And we saw in that first fight, he had Gaethje wobbled way more than one time. He had Gaethje wobbled quite a few times. So a guy like Dustin Poirier that hits as hard as he does in the pocket, that's where he's the most dangerous. And in a matchup where they're both coming forward, I mean, they're going to end up in the pocket from time to time. That's That's for sure. So... How do I see it going on the feet? Well, that's tough. Obviously, when you're getting... So here's the deal. On the feet, I do think that Poirier's improvements are going to be easier to make, okay? The, the, between the two fights. What was what was making Dustin struggle a lot in that first fight was those heavy leg kicks, getting him to put his hand down, dropping down on the mat a little bit, um, things like that. Well, he can learn to check a leg kick much easier then Justin Gaethje can, can make it so he doesn't get wobbled. You know what I mean? Because he's going to get hit. That's just what's going to happen in this fight. It's a five-round fight. It's going to happen. So for Gaethje, the things that were wobbling him was punches to the head. There's not much you can do about that. It's going to wobble you, especially when you're coming from a guy like Poirier, who hits as hard as he does. Not only that, Poirier is willing to work the body in his, in his striking combinations, and uh, Gaethje's more of a head hunter. He'll go to the body some, but he's more of a head hunter. So... Uh, one other problem with Gaethje is he doesn't protect his body as much as I'd like to see. But it hasn't really come back to bite him yet. But he doesn't protect his body as much as when he keeps the hands up here and just gets into the brawl. You know what I mean? So, for me, I think Poirier has the easier path to uh, to fix what was the issues he had in the first fight. But the thing to keep in mind is Poirier won the first fight. Maybe he doesn't think he needed to fix those things. And now we've got Justin Gaethje who says, okay, well, these are the things I need to work on. This is what I need to correct going into this matchup. How can I, can I do that in this one? So it's, it's, tr it's tough there because, like I said, easier for him to correct the things he needs to correct, more likely to say, oh, I need to correct those things, okay? So let's go ahead and break down grappling. Now, we know Justin Gaethje doesn't use his wrestling like he used to. He should use it in this matchup because Poirier's takedown defense – it's not that good. Um, in fact, I'm going to start drawing some lines here. We're, we're going to draw some lines, guys. Okay, so first things first. Okay, very powerful, explosive takedowns for Justin Gaethje. We're going to draw Justin Gaethje in red, okay? Um, so he has powerful, explosive takedowns. That is a plus for Justin Gaethje over the lack of a takedown defense for Poirier. Now, Poirier does work back to his speed. He tries to get back up, yada, yada. He's very good at doing that, but... Justin Gaethje is a very good wrestler, and if he gets on top of you, he's going to start slamming that ground and pound on a guy like Dustin Poirier, who, you know, I mean, sure, he's going to try to work back to his feet, but when you're getting hit by Justin Gaethje, that's a little bit tough, especially because the wrestling that Gaethje has, when he did show that, it, was, it wasn't it was like, oh, yeah, he shoots, you know, gets him up against the cage and kind of works for a takedown. He's picking guys up and just putting them down. So if he went back to that for this particular fight, I think it would really help him a lot, especially when it comes down to, say, 30 seconds left in the round, 45 seconds left in the round. Nothing to, you know, nothing really to worry about too much except for a close fight, a close round between the two guys. Try to steal the round, get that takedown, land some ground and pound, get sway the sway the judges in your, your favor. So that that's the, the, the path for him there. Uh, on the other hand, there is the grappling and the takedown offense of Poirier. Now his takedowns aren't 
he doesn't have a lot in the toolbox for takedowns. He basically just shoots a double leg under the strikes of his opponent. Uh, but here's where that could be a good possibility. So we've got a guy in Justin Gaethje who tends to kind of overcommit to his strikes when he gets a little bit excited, which it, it happens sometimes. Because a guy like Dustin Poirier is very opportunist, opportunistic in his takedowns, right there, that is a good possibility for him. He can shoot that takedown underneath a strike from Justin Gaethje when he just gets to wing in those bombs, right? And if he's able to do that, catch him off balance, get that takedown, I would say Justin Gaethje's jiu-jitsu, I mean, uh, Dustin Poirier's jiu-jitsu is a little bit better than a guy like Justin Gaethje just because he's got more opportunities here. Now, the reason I say that, he's got a better submission arsenal, he's able to chain his submission attempts together, and he's very good at, at finding these openings, right? So for, for Dustin Poirier, I think when it gets to the mat, if he's on top, he's got a good good chance here. When he's on bottom, Justin Gaethje using that wrestling top pressure, that those wrestling skills, great. But if he tr starts shooting takedowns in the open mat on a guy like Justin Gaethje, it's not happening. He's got very good takedown defense, and his sprawl is fantastic. He has an excellent sprawl, but he does get taken down. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I wrote it right there, but I could have just done this. He does get taken down uh, when he overcommits to his strikes because that's a thing that he does sometimes. It's not, um, you know, it's it's most of his takedowns, he's going to stuff them with a sprawl, but the overcommit, not good. Now, here's the deal. He works right back to, up to his feet. Cool. No big deal. But that's a similar thing. In a close round, when it comes down to it and the judges are like, all right, who won that round? Both guys landed good shots on the feet. Casey overcommitted one time, got taken down for, you know, 30, 45 seconds. Well, everything else was pretty close. Let's go with the guy that got the takedown. We see it a lot in, in MMA. That's what happens, okay? So so for me, that is important, just like this is important if he wants to mix in those takedowns. Both guys are durable. Both guys got great cardio. We got that much. We don't have to really consider that being an issue for either guy. Now, for uh, Dustin Poirier, when he does get on top of guys, he starts to use his ground and pound almost immediately. He's very much finish over position, which is fine because he wants to get the finish, but he can sometimes let guys back up, and a guy like Gage, he's going to try and work back up to his feet. But one thing he does do is use his ground and pound very well to advance his position. So he's going to start throwing this heavy ground and pound, right? And then as soon as his opponent tries to make that, that move to get back to their feet, he's going to try and use that as a chance to advance the position. It either results in a scramble, both guys, you know, whatever happens, somehow somebody ends up wherever in the, wherever in the scramble, or... Uh, Poirier is able to successfully advance his position and then ground and pound from a more advantageous position, maybe start looking for submission, whatever. So in that aspect, I think top side grappling, favor goes to Poirier, but scoring the takedowns, favor goes to Justin Gaethje. Now, in this matchup here, this is a really tough one to pick because even if, if Poirier does end up on the bottom, he does have a good ability to sweep off his back. But again, you're going against Justin Gaethje, who's got that wrestling. Now, do I think this is going to end up in the grappling? Probably not. We're going to see a lot of striking. So we're going to see a lot of striking. Well, it comes down to who do you think gets the win in the striking department? Now, for me, I've gone back and forth on this. I rewatched, like I said, I rewatched their old fight, their last fight uh, with each other, and then kind of broke down the stuff. All signs point to Dustin Poirier winning this fight, but it's really close. It is razor thin. But all signs point to Dustin Poirier. So for me, I'm going to take Dustin Poirier in this matchup. I believe he opened as the underdog, which is crazy. Uh, but there's a reason he's now the favorite. Because uh, usually the guy that won the last fight doesn't open as the underdog. Although we just saw it in uh, Pantoja versus Moreno. And for some reason, Oddsmakers had Pantoja as the underdog. And well, duh, of course he won. So he's already beaten him twice before that. And then he beats him a third time. What'd you expect? So anyway, uh, Dustin Poirier... He did open as the underdog. Obviously, now he's the favorite. I think rightfully so. I think Dustin Poirier gets this one done. I think it's a close fight because it's a tough fight. I won't be surprised if Justin Gaethje goes out there, slams some heavy leg kicks, and gets the win that way. But let me know what you guys think. If you have made it this far in this video and you're still watching, go ahead and hit like for me. I appreciate it very much. These videos do take a lot of time for me, writing this stuff up, you know, going over all these notes. So just like the video. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. If you'd like to contribute monetarily, go ahead and sign up for a channel membership, $2.99. Click the join button below this video. I appreciate the heck out of all you guys. Thank you so much for watching and let me know what you think in the comments below and see you next time.